This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV. The Kia EV9. With available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults. With a zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute. And available reclining lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash ev9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at H&M.com. Apple Card is the credit card created by Apple. You earn 3% daily cash back up front when you use it to buy a new iPhone 15, AirPods, or any products at Apple. And you can automatically grow your daily cash at 4.15% annual percentage yield when you open a high-yield savings account. Apply for Apple Card in the Wallet app on iPhone. Apple Card subject to credit approval. Savings is available to Apple Card owners subject to eligibility. Savings accounts by Goldman Sachs Bank USA member FDIC. Terms apply. Level up your listening with Bose Quiet Comfort Ultra Earbuds and Headphones with immersive sound and world class noise cancellation for a not so silent night. Visit Bose.com slash Spotify to shop sound that's more than a present. It's time to say goodbye to hold music and say hello to fast customer support with Service Cloud. With trusted AI and data working together, you can skip long wait times and deliver efficient, personalized service right away. All while keeping support costs low and more customers happy. Reimagine your customer support with the number one AI CRM for service. Learn what's possible at salesforce.com slash products slash service. This episode is brought to you by Klaviyo, the platform that powers smarter digital relationships. With Klaviyo, you can activate all your customer data in real time. Connect seamlessly with your customers across all channels. Guide your marketing strategy with AI-powered insights, recommendations, and automated assistance. Deliver experiences that feel individually designed at scale and grow your business faster. Power smarter digital relationships with Klaviyo. Learn more at klaviyo.com slash Spotify. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash Spotify. Between the kids being home and hosting, everything in our house gets used up in summer. With Instacart, I can save money by stocking up on all my favorite summer brands. I save time by getting everything delivered in as fast as an hour. And I save myself a sink full of dirty dishes by stocking up on paper plates for the annual summer cookout. Save more on summer essentials? Spend more time enjoying summer. Add summer to cart. Download the app to get free delivery on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time. Minimum $10 per order. Additional terms apply. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, your go-to source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We hope you tune in often for all things people management, organizational development and change, organizational leadership, and social impact related. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with T. Renee Smith about creating an organizational culture of openness, safety, and transparency. T. Renee Smith, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me, John. It is such a pleasure to be with you today. I'm super excited. Uh, You have a great energy about you, and I know you have tons of wonderful expertise in relation to the topic that we're going to be exploring together. We're going to be talking about creating an organizational culture of openness, safety, and transparency. And as we were talking in the pre-interview, you know, you were saying this is what you do each and every day, all day, every day. Uh, It's such an important area, and I'm super excited to to uh, really 
tap into your wisdom and your insights and share that with my listeners. As we get started, I wanted to share T. Renee's bio with everybody. T. Renee Smith, CEO of iSuccess Consulting, Inc., is known as the business scalability strategist. She is dedicated to empowering 1 million CEOs globally to build a holistic life and business. More than two decades ago, T. Renee began her first business at the age of 19, this episode is brought to you by Carnegie Mellon's Tepper School of Business. Want to advance your career or switch fields? An MBA from Carnegie Mellon's Tepper School of Business can help. Earn your degree from a top-ranked business school with a thought-provoking curriculum, one-on-one leadership coaching, support from experienced career counselors, and full-time online hybrid and accelerated MBA formats. Join the intelligent future. Visit cmu.edu slash Tepper to learn more on credit with no experience or even a business plan. As a result, she was forced to file bankruptcy, was imprisoned, and had to rebuild both her life and company from scratch. Using these experiences as a guidepost, T. Renee translates the tough lessons of her own business failures and successes in her best-selling book, The CEO Life. T. Renee has helped raise more than $30 million in capital for small businesses and is a secret weapon behind many successful corporate minority business development programs, including Delta Airlines. And T. Renee is a wife and mom to two very active boys and a bonus daughter. I love that, uh, including the bonus daughter. How yes. wonderful. <laughs> I feel like I had her myself. I really do. <laughs> Yeah, wonderful. Well, what a tremendous background. Anything else you would like to share with listeners by way of your uh, background or personal context before we dive on into the conversation? Well, I just want to say, regardless of what type of CEO CEO you are, whether it is the CEO of your own life, whether it is you being um, having an, an entrepreneurial spirit, working for a corporation, or whether you're an executive, what we're talking about today is extremely important. So make it relevant to you and to where you are. Well said. And we we really all do have leadership responsibilities. And sometimes that's just in our personal life. Sometimes that's in our homes, maybe in our neighborhoods, our communities. Sometimes that's in the workplace. Um, And certainly we have all sorts of uh, leaders that we engage with. And so not only do we need to learn how to be more effective leaders on our own, we need to learn how to engage with other leaders around us. And we need to recognize that just because someone has a title uh, and a position in the hierarchy doesn't mean they're actually a good, effective leader. And just because we may or may, you know, maybe we don't have that title, maybe we don't have that, that position power within our organization, but that doesn't mean we can't be influential and impactful uh, with those around us. So I, I, I'm super excited to explore all of this with you. Now, as I framed out the episode is at the um, outset, we're going to be zooming in and focusing uh, particularly on organizational culture, openness, safety, and transparency. Um, now, of course, we can dive into other aspects of leadership as it relates to that. But why do you feel like openness, safety, and transparency is so key and foundational as we're trying to develop a, a, a positive, dynamic, healthy organizational culture? And one thing I want to say is because we do a lot of um, diversity, equity, and inclusion work as well. And one thing that we say that there's a difference between inclusion and belonging. And so everything that you're talking about, creating a very safe, or open, a transparent environment, that goes right along with belonging, where people feel like that they are a part, that they can talk and they can say anything without retaliation. And really, all of this leads to increased productivity. It leads to better uh, mental health. And so there's so many benefits of feeling like you belong in a in a um, in the company that you work with so it's the tangible reasons where it affects bottom line um, impact revenue Uh, it is relational where happier and healthier employees they get along better Um, it's creating a better culture so I think it's so many different roles but or so many different reasons but people don't understand how you get there so it doesn't just happen people think that you can just roll out a training you know in a corporation to talk about belonging and it happens but it's so much more than that it always starts from the top down from what your leader um, is executing and their behavior. So starting from the executives all the way down to the leaders, and then what you're really, really instilling in your employees. So you, in order to create a culture, you have to, number one, have leaders that believe in a culture of safeness, belonging, authenticity, because a lot of organizations are very hypocritical, where they tell the leaders or they tell their employees that they want to be very transparent, they want them to be very open, but leadership is not doing that. They may be uh, working on a merger, or they may be working on um, downsizing people or any of these things, and they're not being very authentic. So when we talk about 
building this culture, it is from a top down. You cannot create an organization of um, safety and belonging if it's just at the employee level. To the extent possible, we try to have uh, top down commitment and buy in to these sorts of issues, yep. uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, other cultural uh, issues within the organization. But we also want to try to have a bottom up. So like bottom up, yep. Simultaneously, top down commitment, bottom up kind of grassroots um, push to sometimes encourage perhaps yes. upper management and leadership uh, to recognize these are really important issues to us as employees. Uh, and that if this isn't something to be overlooked. And when you kind of have both the energy both ways, you have a much higher chance Absolutely. of something really taking hold. And to your point earlier, you know, whether it's with diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, workshops and trainings and, you know, initiatives within an organization or team building or just some sort of OD transformation or organizational change generally, you know, what regardless of what it is this isn't a one and done kind of a situation. It's not like you can just say, okay, everyone, let's, we're going to hold an, hold an all teams meeting, uh, all hands meeting. Everyone from the team is coming. We're going to talk about creating a culture of openness, safety, and transparency. And after this hour long meeting, you know, we're all going to get it and boom, we're good. We can move on. No, that's not how it works. That's not how it ever works. And anyone uh, listening who's ever been, you know, working with a team or with a, within an organiz organizational setting, you recognize that that the absurdity of that notion. Yet that's how we often function. That's how leaders often try to roll out things within their business. Um, that's often how team leads uh, will try to do things within their smaller team. And it's not out of bad intention. Like I think people want the change to stick, but they don't really know how to do it. They don't know how to make sure it's sustainable. And ultimately we end up spinning our wheels, doing a lot of work for something that's never going to take hold because we don't have an actual implementation kind of long-term plan for how we want to go about doing it. And we don't reinforce it over time. And so it, of course it doesn't stick. And we just kind of go back to whatever the status quo was before. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. And what happens is you have competing priorities because everything has to be done. And if it's not part of the business strategy, you can definitely, I totally agree with the, um, the bottom up approach, the top down approach, the approach is in between, uh, but it has to be part of a, the business strategy, or it has to be an initiative that is of importance to be able to create a culture of safety. Because like you said, you have to ingrain it in the fabric or in the DNA of the entire culture from how you uh, do interviewing and hiring to your team meetings to leaderships to project management like you are really creating a culture shift and so you think about it these are habits that people have this is the behavior that they had so you really are looking to do a behavior change and so that takes um, rolling it out reinforcing it uh, giving positive um, reinforcement when it does work. And then when it doesn't work doing training and coaching. So it definitely is an all hands on deck effort. And then number two, you have to really able to be honest and define what your culture currently is. So you can have a baseline and then create a vision of the type of culture that you want. What does safety look like? What does belonging look like? What does authenticity look like? What does transparency look like for our organization? Because what it looks like for one organization, it'll look uh, totally different for another organization. For instance, how Google, how they operate and how their organization is, is totally different than a Delta Airlines. So you have to, I think a lot of times people try to take a, um, an off the shelf approach versus really customizing it to who our leadership is, who are our employees, and really how do we operate and being honest. And so I think sometimes it's hard for corporations to take an honest assessment of where they're missing it with uh, creating a culture of openness, safety, and belonging, and then being able to have the hard conversations of what shifts need to be made. Let's talk a little bit more about really just what we mean by these terms, because I, I do think that's important. So openness, safety, and transparency, I, they do go together. But let's take a moment and talk about what each of those mean. And then we'll talk about the how behind, you know, really making sure we can implement this effectively. Okay. So I think with openness and that really, um, it increases creativity, it increases uh, innovation, it is being able to have uh, a space where people are open to bring their whole self to work, where they're able to bring their whole experience to, you know, their whole experiences, background, knowledges without judgment. So I think for me, that is the definition of openness. What about you? 
Yeah, I agree. I, I think when I think about openness, I want to bring my whole authentic self to the workplace. I don't want to feel like I have to self-censor um, my experiences, my lived experience, my background, uh, you know, and sometimes that's positive things. And sometimes that's hard things and, and, and even negative things. And I'm not saying we need to just be uh, a, a place where everyone dumps all their baggage all the time in the workplace, but we do need to recognize that people, you can't compartmentalize your personal life and your work life. Like they do bleed into each other. And so we need to have a place where we can be open, where we can um, share and we can receive the type of support that we need when we're dealing with stuff, whether it's dealing with stuff at work or at home or whatever. And then of course, on the, on the flip side, on the positive side, where we have a chance to share our wins, where we have a chance to, uh, to share about the cool things that we're doing uh, in our personal time or with our families and those sorts of things, all of that has a place in the workplace. And that's part of openness for me. Uh, and it bleeds right into safety because if you truly have a, an open environment, it's a safe environment. It's a psychologically safe environment. It's one where I feel like I could share my perspective and I don't expect everyone to agree, to agree with me, um, just like they don't expect me to agree with them. And we have that kind of security in ourselves um, and, and kind of a, a psychological uh, mat maturity that we can be there safely with each other and share our perspectives. When we can share our perspectives in that way, we're also able to be more open uh, with each other because we've developed trust over time. Yes. And I think too, with the safety, it is validation, not condemnation, meaning that your experience is your experience. Your story is your story. My experience is my experience. My story is my story. And so nobody gets to tell us that how you're perceiving something is wrong. It may not necessarily be the truth or the actual facts, but for you, how you experienced it is valid to you. So even when you deal with workplace conflict and you may have somebody that gets offended at something that was said and a person can say, well, I didn't intend, that was not my intention, but the person still got offended, it still hurts them. Their story is valid, their experience is valid. So you can't say to them, you can't feel like that, you shouldn't experience that. You can say that that was not my intention, I didn't intend to do it. So just making sure that in a safe space, Everybody gets to own their own story. Everybody gets to own their own experience. Everybody gets to own their own perception. And you're able to validate a person for that. Now, it may not necessarily be what you experience. It may not necessarily be the hardcore facts. But for them, that is their perception. And so in a safe space, being able to validate that that is a person's perspective and then being able to work through it where we have a common understanding. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Academy. Courses, micro-credentials, and certificates to upskill and reskill for the future of work. All HCI Academy courses, micro-credentials, and certificates are designed, developed, and delivered by award-winning and internationally renowned scholars, educators, thought leaders, executives, and practitioners. Our courses, micro-credentials, and certificates will help you make your mark on the future of work and make an immediate impact in your organizations check out the HCI Academy and our many course offerings and certificates to upskill and reskill for the future of work. Check out our new weekly LinkedIn newsletter, Alchemizing Human Capital, exploring industry trends via original research and interviews with executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We look forward to having you join us. Absolutely. And then that bleeds into transparency too. Uh, it's, it's so interesting because for a long time and still even today, many leaders want to control the narrative. They want to control, you know, they want to consolidate power and control through how they disseminate information. Um, and so transparency hasn't always been, you know, a really top corporate value, uh, but more and more today, 
employees are demanding it. Uh, consumers are demanding it. They, they want transparency. And we're in the internet age where information is so easily accessed online. People want to know uh, if as a consumer that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm buying products and services from an organization that has a mission that I can get behind, um, that they're doing things in an ethical way, that they treat their employees well. Like it, consumers want that transparency. Yes. Certainly employees within the organization want and demand that kind of transparency. And when they don't get it, what do they end up doing? Leave. Most of most of them get frustrated. Um, they get disengaged uh, and they either leave, like you said, or they psychologically disconnect. disconnect. So, and that's, that's even worse because then they leave like, mentally or physically. Yeah. The, if, if you, if you're there physically, but you've left mentally, you know, that's not great for the team. And it, so either way, it's, it's, it's not a good situation for organizations. So it blows my mind that we're still having this conversation about the importance of transparency um, that we're still trying to convince executives and leaders that they need to be more transparent, open with their people. Um, but it's, it's one we're going to have to keep harping on because it, the, the old school mentality still persists in a lot of organizations. And I think it's just more comfortable to have this sense of security and control that I'm going to dole out information and I'm going to be relevant because I have all the information. Um, but we need to get past that. Mm -hmm. And I also think with transparency too, it has to be transparency without retaliation. Because a lot of times you will have uh, leadership where they're wanting to do these listening sessions and they're saying that they want to get feedback. And so then when the employees are thinking that they're in a safe and a trusted environment and they are being transparent, a lot of times that information will come back to bite them. So I think number one, we've got to be very careful and make sure that it's transparency without retaliation, that I truly am in an open, in a safe space and I'm able to speak my opinion or uh, speak whatever my truth is, and it's not retaliation. And then two, I think oftentimes you may have leadership that is saying, we want you to be transparent, but it's very hypocritical because they're not being transparent. So we can't say, well, we want uh, bottom halfway middle to be transparent, but the top, we don't have to be transparent. So it really has to be that we're setting these standards throughout the organization and we have to define uh, what transparency means and what does it look like for our organization? Because oftentimes when leadership is transparent, that opens them up to be able to have questions, to be able to get feedback, to be able to hear maybe uh, people having different opinions about their policy. So leaders have to able to be inclusive leaders and be able to have their ideas challenged and not really take this authoritarian type of um, mentality of absolutely what I say goes and it, you know, you execute it. And then they're wondering midstream of a project being executed, why it's not working or why it doesn't have the buy-in. So I think you've got to start, if you're looking at an inclusive organization that's open, or authentic, you have to really look at being able to get engagement and buy-in from all levels. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And yes, transparency goes both ways. I talk a lot about the importance of mutual accountability and trust yes. in the workplace, right? And that part of that is the transparency that goes both ways. We're mutually accountable to each other. And what you just said is so important. So often organizations talk about accountability. They talk about, um, you know, metrics and, and, abiding by policies, practices, procedures of the organization, all of these things, transparency. And, and then it's, it's really just one directional. Um, it's unidirectional and it's only the lower level managers and employees that are expected to follow it. And there's like two tiers and there's one set of rules for the executives exactly. uh, or senior leadership. And there's a completely different set of rules for everyone else. And that kind of hypocrisy just doesn't fly. People see through it a mile away. Um, and, and it's one of the things that honestly, it, it demotivates people so quickly yeah. when, you, when you're given lip service to these important values that are apparently are so important to the organization, like openness, safety, and transparency, accountability, uh, trust, those sorts of things. And then it, you know, it's only used to punish people below, but there's no accountability above. And you know, so let, we need to get past that. Transparency, of course, is important both directions. And uh, leaders, I think, need to, to look hard, take a good, hard, long look at themselves in the mirror. Are you being transparent enough? Uh, or do you tend towards 
more of an authoritarian kind of a style? Do you tend more towards kind of power control uh, with the information that you have? Or are you more uh, open and democratic with the information? Recognizing that, yeah, sometimes that means people are going to know things that you wish they didn't know, and they're going to end up pushing back in ways you wish they didn't push back. Yeah. Um, but guess what? People will trust you more. Uh, they will they will follow you more because yeah. they trust you. Uh, and that's going to lead to better outcomes for the organization. And sometimes it means you're going to have to work through sticky issues. And sometimes they're going to point out things that need to be pointed out. And that's ultimately going to be good for the organization in the long run as well. You said it all. I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, good, good. So we, 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 we've talked a lot about the importance of openness, safety, and transparency. Now, and, and we even talked a little bit in general terms about in, the importance of buy-in, top-down, bottom-up, making sure that this isn't a one-off kind of a thing, but we have like an actual um, strategy around how we're going to try to accomplish this. So those are pieces of the how. Let's now t- spend the rest of our time talking a little bit more in detail about how can we go about doing this? How can we really truly create an openness culture within my team? How can we have psychological safety and how can we be more transparent in our team right now, today? What can we start to do? Well, I think you just gave the biggest nugget, which was take an honest and a hard look at yourself because leadership starts from within and then it goes without. So oftentimes we are looking to hold people accountable for things that we don't even hold ourselves accountable for. So as a leader, the very first thing that you have to do, and this is a leader in any kind of role, a mother, a father, an executive, uh, an employee, whoever it is, number one, take an honest hard look at yourself and say, am I personally uh, representative? Are, are the things that I do representative of safety, authenticity, transparency, are the things that I do and how I show up? Is it contributing positively to that type of environment or is it negatively? Negatively. So we're talking about, we don't even have to talk about the CEO, COO or all the C-suites. Just look at where you are now. And as a contributor to a team or as um, someone leading a team, am I showing up like that? And if not, then the very first thing that you need to do is an honest assessment with yourself and say, maybe I am being more critical. Maybe I am being retaliatory when someone is trying to give positive feedback or 360 degree feedback. And so I don't create an environment. Maybe I interrupt people, you know, when they're talking. And so they don't feel like maybe I offer advice when people aren't even asking for advice. So number one is do a self-assessment and see what things are you doing that are negatively uh, contributing um, to not building this safe space. And then once you make the necessary changes that you need to make, then now we can start looking outward. So number one is to take an honest heart, look at yourself and then be honest if you're willing to make the changes required and are you committed to making the changes to show up differently? So don't expect from somebody else what you don't do yourself. And it's a hard thing because nobody's perfect. And mm-hmm. and certainly I don't need to be perfect before I start oh, no. to try to expect things from other people. Um, so it's, but you're absolutely right. Like focus on yourself first, focus on being where you need to be and recognize you don't need to reach perfection uh, yeah. and you need to be patient with yourself as well. And, and then while you're learning and growing in your own capacity to do these things better, you then can simultaneously model openness, transparency, um, and safety for your team. And you can start to expect more from them. And, and frankly, you're going to learn and grow together. Uh, you're, and, and you're going to misstep together and you're going to have to make course corrections together. And that's part of the transparency, openness, and safety, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's, it's part of modeling that the whole culture that you want is recognizing we don't have to have it all figured out. We don't need to be perfect at this, but we do need to make a real conscious, um, sustainable effort towards it. And that means we're going to take sometimes two steps forward, one step back, and then we're going to debrief and we're going to talk about it and what happened um, and what can we do to be better next time. And as long as we're open to that and having those conversations and looking, you know, critically at ourselves and being self-reflective in that way, then, you know, that's, I think that's the biggest part of the battle Um, because most people, most teams, most organizations aren't secure enough and self-confident enough uh, to be able to go through that kind of uh, an exercise. They're too concerned about looking dumb, looking bad, um, you know, being vulnerable and having that taken advantage of and being retaliated against in some way. Um, and, and so we just need to start the process and mm-hmm. then model it. 
And then think, like you said, if you're if you're a leader and you say to your team, hey, guys, I've done some self-reflection and I've really noticed um, some areas in you know my life that where I may not be creating um, the most safe space. So these are some of the things that I'm going to work on. How about you guys tell me other areas and ways in which that I can do things to create this space? So now when you do that and you open and hear the feedback versus I can't believe you said that about me. I don't do that. Like for you to be able to self-reflect, then open it up for feedback. Then now you can say, would you guys be open to go on this journey with me for us to be able to create this together? So how about we all do self-reflection? Let's all figure out how to hold accountability. So now that we're together, we're apart, and it's not me over here telling you what it is to do. So the leader is very important for you to do some self-reflection first, just like you said, and then bring your team along and you guys are doing it together. I love it. T. Renee, this has just been a fascinating conversation. So much fun. I know at the time I'm going to have to let you go here in a minute, but we've just scratched the surface. There's so much more we could say, and you're welcome back anytime and we can continue the conversation. But before we close for today, I wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can get connected with you, find out more about your work, uh, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Okay, so guys, uh, you guys can reach me on all social media platforms um, at iSuccessConsult. Uh, I S-U-C-C-E-S-S consult, C-O-N-S-U-L-T. And my website is isuccessconsulting.com. And the one thing that I will lead with you guys too is when you're looking at creating a very um, safe space or very um, uh, a culture of, of transparency, you really have to, number one, just be open. And like you said, John, realize that it is a process. It is not something that is going to happen overnight. But if you're very honest and you're very upfront and you're very open, little bit by little bit by little bit, it can be established. So look at those little wins and don't just, you know, paint this whole big picture of where you're wanting to get to. Have that vision, but just take it step by step, day by day and celebrate the wins. Absolutely. Celebrate the wins. Always super important. Thank you, T. Renee. It's been a real pleasure. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about what she can do for you. Check out her book. Uh, Check out the many cool resources that are available. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe. They can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Bluer Than Indigo Leadership, The Journey of Becoming a Truly Remarkable Leader. Early in my adult life, I learned about an Asian proverb that translates as bluer than indigo. If you think about the color indigo, it is a brilliant, deep, and vibrant blue, what some would call the bluest of blues. To have something that is bluer than indigo is rare and truly remarkable. Contrary to popular myth, there is no one-size-fits-all or cookie-cutter approach to effective leadership. There is no silver bullet, no secret sauce, no go-to model that will solve all of your problems. The truth is, great leaders have all had their unique strengths and flaws and have all had to discover and then pave their own distinctive path in their life's journey to fulfill their leadership potential. Bluer Than Indigo Leadership will help you discover your own path and explore those ordinary, everyday actions that will help you respond to an uncertain future and produce extraordinary results for your individuals, teams, and organizations. alchemy of truly remarkable leadership, ordinary everyday actions that produce extraordinary results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years with increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition. The average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life.
check out Human Capital Innovations magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free interactive e-magazine with the mission to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We publish issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Take a look at the latest issue and let us know what you think. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week. Check out our new weekly LinkedIn newsletter, Alchemizing Human Capital, exploring industry trends via original research and interviews with executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We look forward to having you join us.